Pull up a chair and let's talk some football. Personal question. Mace, the 49ers have signed Rocky Sin to bolster their cornerback room. Mace, are you digging it? Actually, I liked Rocky Sin um, when he was drafted, I think, out of the second round a couple years back. Uh, since then, he's kind of been a, like a journeyman. I'm not really sure why. Um, I'm definitely going to dive into uh, his career now. Uh, the Niners are kind of – out of place here in a sense that in the Kyle Shanahan era, they really haven't had a strong cornerback slash safety room. And I feel like now they've really put on some pieces, especially with like Jair Brown in the secondary. Uh, they got out in the special team stud. Uh, Lenore's really showed up and kind of done what I thought Avery Thomas was going to do. And he's taking a step back. So there's been some guys in and out there and kind of like a revolving door. So getting a guy like Rocky Sin, um, I feel like the Niners might probably know what they're going to get out of him. And uh, he might not push for a starting spot, but maybe like a nickel roll and just be that guy in the red zone that can just create havoc and just put his nose down and not really care about much. That sounds good to me. Now, Mace, I, I'm not going to lie. I really do a podcast just to get people's information about my beloved Jets. So a more personal question this time. Ashton Davis just signed a one-year deal to return to the Jets. Is it possible he could fill one of the two safety spots? Or are we like... Definitely drafting two in the this upcoming draft. Um, I think he can push to be like that kind of third guy. Um, there was a game a couple of years back. I think he had like a, a call it game, like a pick six at the end and ran it back like 40 something yards. Um, out of Cal, pretty good. He doesn't, I mean, he's not like a stretch the you know field left to right kind of guy, but um, he can kind of bang a little bit in the box and he can kind of step out for you. So as long as the, the spotlight isn't entirely on him, I think he can be an essential role player in uh, your guys' defense. Jameson, any thoughts on Ashton Davis? It's just the thing about him is just the percentage of snaps he played. He only played 19%. He's got three interceptions. You'd like to see for a third round pick. You'd like to see him on the field more, but I think he's, I think you're looking for two in the draft personally, or maybe another free agent or with how wild the off season has been already. I wouldn't be surprised for a trade. I'm just throwing whatever out, but you know, with the defensive line for the jets, he might not need safeties next year. <laughs> Uh, but we still need a offense, but let's not talk <laughs> about that. So, gentlemen, obviously, we welcome Mace Riney tonight from RPO Football as we talk about rookies. Now, we are going to be conducting a one-round draft of rookie LB prospects. Just linebackers. You're going to get our top 12, a little bit of the best of the rest. But before we kick off, if you want to really get a jump on your competition for your drafts, our comprehensive 2024 IDP plus rookie guide is here. Get the rookie draft guide for a limited time for only $9.99 and receive updates every Friday as the NFL draws near. Check out the link in the show description and download your copy today. Gentlemen, as is our tradition, we always let the guest pick first. So Mace, yes. who is your top prospect? I was actually really hoping that you guys were going to let me go first. I just didn't want to like be a bug about it and slide it into the <laughs> chat and be like, yeah, I got to go first, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, first thing, though, about this linebacker class is that it's not like deep in a sense, but there are a lot of guys at the top who could take that top spot. So, like my number one might not be the same as Jamison or Joseph or you, per se. But um, I like Peyton Wilson out of NC State. Yes, he is probably a grandfather at the age of 24, right? The dynasty people out there are probably going to shy away from him. But he's 6'4", 230-ish. I say that because there's about four or five websites that report the, the weight. Um, his mentality reminds me of like a Watt Jr., not in the sense of how he plays, but in the sense of how he gets knocked down, gets up, never quits, three down, four down guy. Uh, he could play any kind of role for you. Uh, tackling machine who has some ability to also play the line. Um, active hands, he does kind of get like held up in one-on-ones against bigger guys, but he is, although he is tall, he is kind of not, not like slender man-esque, but he's, you know what I mean? Like he just, he doesn't have that, that kind of get that maybe like a Dallas Turner or someone would, you know? So, um, and he's got an injury history, um, two seasons that, uh, he sat out for like two, or I guess like one and a half technically, but, um, some of that's going to be on there. So that might slide him a little bit down. And then he got caught with a fake ID and ran from the police in 2019, but um, if you want to look at the bright side of that, he was just young and dumb and, you know, he's probably got his legs in and he probably won't do that again when he goes to his next team, right? He already got it out of the system. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I think in this, in this class, you're going to want to look for guys that are active, look for guys that are going to um, 
be able to extend their kind of their play style. And I think Peyton Wilson has the most wide range of ability of any of the linebacker class. Yeah, I love that call. Uh, what stood out to me is like the 151 pass rush snaps that he had his final year. Like that's like that's an added bonus. Yeah. Right. In the IDP world. Um, all right. Joseph. No, Jameson, you're up next. Don't matter to me. I guess I'll go. But I'll go uh, first team All American, All SEC, Edron Cooper out of Texas AM. and uh, Just almost like an old school Punisher, just a really physical linebacker. He's got the top end speed. Uh, the one thing I really noticed about him, he was really good at sniffing out screens, and he's able to spy against mobile quarterbacks. We know the NFL is kind of moving more towards athletic guys who can move. And I think, especially a lot of the zone defense that's being played in the NFL right now, uh, having that ability is really something that I think any linebacker should have. But uh, he can dodge blocks too. But the only thing, he's just been very inconsistent, I think. A lot of it is just being a little bit too aggressive and undisciplined. And then he ends up overshooting some stuff too. But other than that, uh, between him and Peyton, I think those are the top-end guys for the linebackers. And like May said, it's very top-heavy. And we'll get into the rest of the guys. But I think he's pretty much clear-cut number two. Mace, with with Edge Cooper, um, you know, Jamison mentioned that he does have a habit of overreacting, right? He can be sort of lulled into making mistakes. Do you think that's something that can get coached out of him? I think it's something that maybe not coached out of him because you like that aggressiveness. Obviously, you're going to have to give him a little bit of like identification, have him read stuff. Um, but it kind of reminds me of almost like a Patrick Queen, where if you can kind of harness that and put it into an LB2 role, then he's going to be phenomenal out the gate. People are going to love him. He's going to be an IDP dandy just because he shoots. And he has that kind of guy that can sit behind him and you know, like that Roquan Smith, that Fred Warner, Drake Greenlaw kind of hype. So if he can get put in that number two role, which he might just because of the depth of this linebacker class, then I think he'll be fine. If he gets immediately pushed into an LB1 role like Jameson was saying, then it might not be too good. He's going to have some growing pains, kind of some Kenneth Murray going. Very good. Uh, Joe. That leaves before us make with my, number three. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Before I make my pick, I got to say, Cooper is my number one in this class, and it's oh. not particularly close. I'm not a Peyton Wilson fan. He is my linebacker four in this class. But Cooper is the only linebacker who I have a true first-round grade on, which I have 18 or 18 total in the class. Don't remember which one. There's one guy on the cut, but don't remember where I decided last. But Cooper I love. I think he's incredible. Ernest Jones is my comp for him. With my pick, I'm going to go with pretty much the only guy in this class who isn't someone who has questionable instincts, and that's it really is his calling card, and that is Junior Colson of the Michigan Wolverines. Their defensive leader, defensive MVP, I believe he was a two-time captain, but incredible instincts, player recognition, called the defense a lot from the field. He's the most sure tackler in this class, in my opinion. Also has some coverage chops, really good in zone, physical player he is a limited athlete and which that was being that being his big question and being injured through the pre-draft process didn't get to see any of those numbers which i mean doesn't really change much but also it's kind of just darn would have really liked to see him have a really good free cone or shuttle or something but so that is a question but and you do see it sometimes he can get outrun in coverage or take a poor angle but i do like him a lot i think He's a very Nick Bolton-esque play. It's a comp that's been thrown around, but I'm not sure if he has quite that upside that Bolton had like in the Super Bowl two years ago, but I think he's a very good player. And Colson will be my pick here. Very nice. I, like you said, Joseph, I'm really a fan of his uh, discipline, right? His his football intelligence, and he does what he's supposed to do. Mace, do you, do you look for that in a player, or would you rather just take the raw athlete and hope they can? deliver the other side um i think in his case so i wasn't really on to junior colson until like january february if like i had watched some of him but kind of like what joseph was saying like he's not horribly athletic like there's nothing amazing like he's not a lead at anything that really sticks out on tape but when you're the mike linebacker team captain of the number one defense in the collegiate space people are going to start looking to see kind of what was going on with that and i feel like he was kind of the centerpiece for that almost like a jj mccarthy like he's getting questioned. People don't really know. It's just because he didn't really have to show it that much, but he was a consistent leader. So they know. So I feel like you kind of get that with, with Carlson. I, just, I don't think he's athletic as Peyton Wilson, but he also doesn't have 
the giant red flags that Peyton Wilson has. And he is like 21, 22. Or the AARP card. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So for sure, it's a good call. I like it. All right. Well, you are up next at the number four pick, Mace. Okay. I am going to have to go with uh, Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. I love that pick. Yeah. So (laughs) he's athletic enough to be rangy, go back and forth. Uh, He's utilized in pass rush. He does kind of get swallowed up sometimes, get handsy. But uh, he's got the length to bring guys down. He's got decent zone coverage. I wish that maybe, you know, like some players veer off too far right or too far left. He stands too still for me to, like, give windows, I guess, to quarterbacks. But that's something I feel like that can be coachable. And then when he's in the spy, he'll get stuck kind of in that danger zone. That's what I call it for a linebacker, that, that line of scrimmage. Instead of committing and taking an angle and going or falling back and trying to, like, understand the player, what's going on, he'll just kind of sit in the zone. But aside from that, I feel like he is kind of like Junior Colson. He's got a lot of potential, and if he goes into a LB one role, he can handle it. Um, but if he also played like an LB two, also outside kind of guy, I feel like that would benefit him in his beginning years. But Trevor Wallace at Kentucky is definitely a guy that uh, IDP people are going to be liking. Yeah, you know his uh, explosion numbers jumped off the board to me. Right, ten seven uh, broad jump, thirty seven and a half inch vert. But to me, Mace, like he kind of reminds me that I had this older relative who would always say this one rhyme, like the cute little girl with the curl in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. (laughs) Right. That reminds me of Trevor Wallace. When Trevor Wallace is really good, you're like, damn. Yeah. And then like two plays later, you're like, damn. (laughs) Right. Like it. A hundred percent. No, for sure. Oh, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right. Awesome. Jameson, sorry for my uh, little little rhymes there, but you're up next with no. the fifth pick. Well, I can't believe I got sniped. I thought I was going to be a little aggressive there, but obviously somebody got me. But I'll just go uh, with Jeremiah Trotter Jr. His dad, Jeremiah Sr., Eagles Hall of Famer. But uh, coming out of Clemson, I think he's just a really good inside linebacker. He's got really good football IQ. Uh, great body control and does well with the change of direction. He's also elusive. He can sniff out play development. The only thing that I've seen with him kind of bites on play action a little too much and he lacks a little bit of length. But other than that, I think he's probably the one of the last guys in this group here that can end up, you know, pretty solid overall in the NFL. Like I kind of talked about earlier, this linebacking group is just it's very top heavy to say the least. So that's where I'm going to go with my next pick, but I wish I would have had Trevin Wallace, but we'll leave it. <laughs> leave it we'll leave that alone. <laughs> well, living in the Philly area, uh, anytime Trotter's name comes up, somebody's bound to yell five foe. Uh, they <laughs> love Jeremiah Trotter and much like his dad, like he has such great instincts. Mace, are we at all worried though about his size? No, I think a um, player like Ivan Pace kind of proved last year that you don't have to be too tall to, you know, to get on the roller coaster that is linebacker. Now, to get on the Philly subject, they did just sign Devin White. So if they had Trotter, I think, next to him, that would really benefit him and give Devin White really a chance to solidify himself as a leader and then give Trotter the time to kind of grow, and then he'll have the legacy and all that hype and stuff like that. Yeah, Philly would go nuts if they signed Trotter. Yeah. That would be a perfect, perfect landing spot. Joe? Number six in the draft. Where are we going? Happy I did not get sniped again there. But I am going to go with not really my forte here, but another pretty steady, underwhelming athlete in Cedric Gray from North Carolina. Underwhelming athlete isn't the right term. He's very much a jack of all trades, master of none. I think he has really good length and range, play sideline to sideline. He's good uh, run blitzing. Fills gaps well, reads eyes well in zone, but can be a little over aggressive. Instincts are meh, misses a few too many tackles. It's really, he's a good player. Someone who, yeah, I don't think he's ever going to be a linebacker one on the IDP squad. Will he be a linebacker two? Maybe. Low end, if anything. My comp for him is a Jermaine Pratt. So, Solid linebacker, too, for an NFL team. I think he can be pretty good, especially third round. If he sneaks into the third round near top 75, I think he can cover cover some holes for you on your defense and be pretty good spot starter, especially on a, for bye weeks and injuries when they come through. 
Now, Mace, like Peyton Wilson, Cedric Gray does have a solid number of pass rush snaps. Do you think this is something that he can, like, carry over into the NFL? I mean, I think so. I think he's, like, one of the only, if not the only, player in FBS in the last three years to have over 100 tackles, or maybe there's a couple tackles. He has 366 over the past three years. There you go. Okay, so – there it is right there. Um, I, I think it can. It's just a matter of if he's going to be drafted in a spot or a team that's actually going to put him in a position to do that. Because, I mean, I got a list of teams here, Arizona, New England, Denver, Las Vegas, Chargers, Tennessee. Like, there's at least 16 teams that probably need a linebacker. But I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be drafted. Like, we saw – all right, I like Chad Mula coming out a couple of years ago, and he ends Go up getting folks. drafted into linebacker hell. So, yeah, you never know. So let's just go over the top six. So the top six linebackers we have, we have Peyton Wilson at one, Edge Cooper at two, Junior Colson, followed by Trevin Wallace, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., and Cedric Gray. Where, Joe, do you put the line for tier one and tier two? So tier one to me is Cooper alone, but if you want to add in any of Wilson, Colson, Wallace. I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty much the tier one. And Wallace, I would say, is the least firm there. Just with him, he could fall to the fourth, fifth round. It's possible. I love him. I think he's awesome. We clearly do. But definitely think there's a gap between after Wallace to Gray. And then from there, my next four names probably aren't in most people's top 10, but the next four Trotter is not in my top 10. A couple other big time names will not be in my top 10. So I think it's really just kind of, there's a list of 20 players who could be in there, I think. Kind of like that third tier of wide receiver this year. Yes, very much so. And it's not to say that Trotter's bad or those guys are bad. It's just preference thing for that point. There's a lot. Dealer's choice. Uh, Mace, where, where would you be on this list for your tier break? So my tier one that I have right now is Peyton Wilson, one, Junior Carlson, two, Edge Cooper, three, uh, Jeremiah Trotter, four, Trevor Wallace, five. And then it cuts off right there. And then I go Ford, Gray, Eichenberg, and uh, Jacobs. All right. Jameson, are you in agreement with there, that top four or five being in that elite tier? Or not elite? I shouldn't say elite. I'd say Wilson and Cooper would be, you know, tier one. And then the other guys outside of Gray would be tier two. And then Gray... Underneath, we're going to get into a lot of these guys, which I, after this, I think a lot of them are going to end up good special teamers. And I don't know if we necessarily want to say that right out of the gate, but just the way I don't think any of these linebackers will be drafted in the first round. I don't think that's a hot take. I think it starts in the second and then we'll go from there. But just the way the draft has been, I think the later half of the draft especially going into round two will be the wide receiver run that we all are expecting. And then some of this value, I think can actually get pushed down a little bit, but that's where I'm currently at. Well, you know, you're not, you might not be thrilled about the linebackers, but one thing we are thrilled about is to announce (laughs) our new partnership with the one-stop shop for the best prices in the travel world, Expedia. Check out the link in the show description and head over to Expedia. Their spring sale can net you up to 25% off select hotels. And of course, they always find the best deals for you so you can just enjoy the ride with your Ride and Dynasty co-hosts. So check out the link in the show description and get your next adventure planned today. Well, Mace, I think the back half of this draft is our adventure. So where are you going with pick number seven? Um, A guy who I think is probably going to be a future Dallas Cowboy. I just said his name, excuse me, uh, Tommy Eichenberg out of Ohio State, 23 years old, 6'2", 230-ish, middle linebacker in a 4-2-5 scheme. So I think it will allow Parsons to just fully go play outside, which is what I think they want to do anyways, but he can still kind of do what he's good at and be athletic. Um, Anyways, so he's great against the run, a great wrap-up tackler, doesn't do anything like specifically amazing. But he can identify defense well, uh, can lead. Um, some passing concepts kind of give him a little bit of hay way sometimes. And then he doesn't really have a lot of speed, and he didn't do anything, I think, mobile-wise in the pre-draft co- like, um, area and the combine or anything. So that's a, a question for me. But aside from the speed and athleticism, I think I have a third-round grade on him. So Now, Mace, do you think he can be more than a two-round thumper? 
two down thumper? Um, yeah, I think he, he has the ability to call plays. He's just going to have to grow into something like that. But um, I, I think some of these guys in this case are going to have to be kind of forced into that role to be able to do it. Um, if he doesn't get a chance immediately, I don't know that he ever will. All right. So, uh, Jameson, with pick number eight, where do you want to go? I'm going to go to Notre Dame. I'm going to go, hopefully I don't butcher his name, Maurice Lufau. Hopefully I got that right. But uh, great uh, field awareness and uh, IQ as well. He's good on taking on blocks. He's got great hands to do it with. But um, I think in the NFL he can end up being a good nickel linebacker. But the thing about him is I think he's going to be more of an assist guy than a solo tackler, uh, kind of like a you know a B, B- minus instead of the A that we're going to shoot for. I don't think he's got the elite ceiling or he's ever going to tap into that potential. But the other thing about him, uh, just lacks a lot of patience and eye discipline. I think that's something on tape that a lot of people will see as well. But I think he can be good. I think, you know, B, C grade linebacker, but I just don't think he's got the ceiling compared to some of these other guys. Okay. Uh, Mace, when it comes to Maris, uh, I know he has like surprising tackle power, especially depending on his size. What do you, where do you see him fitting in, in an NFL defense? Um, well, this is kind of the notes that I have on him. He's a very talkative player during pre-snap leader, uh, puts effort into chasing on downs, isn't afraid to go head to head, take that bang. Uh, mostly lines up his outside. He can do both in rush and pass, but he's not the fastest linebacker like you were saying. I feel like he's really going to have to make his coin on his special teams or get drafted to a coach that just believes in him and he catches fire or something and is able to come in maybe on the outside role, play maybe like a Zach Bond kind of role and then grow into something else. But if not, just be like a Ori Burks or something like that. Okay. Honestly, I'd love to see them, a team put like 20 – 25 pounds on him and put him just as an edge rusher. I'll say, like you said, with Zach Bond, I think that is a really good comp. I think that makes a lot of sense. thought he was best as a blitzer and coming off the edge. So, Yeah, lean into that, right? Mm -hmm. Play to his strengths. That's what good coaches do. Unfortunately, a lot of coaches in the NFL <laughs> aren't good coaches. Uh, <laughs> Joe, at number nine, where are you going? I'm going to go to the Penn State University. Oh near you and that with Curtis Jacobs linebacker who is shorter and smaller as really all of these guys except Colson maybe in I guess Leofu but small linebacker class like last year's wide receivers but he's super rangy I think he's a really good athlete especially laterally change of direction I think he's one of the better coverage linebackers in the class which again at least of the second tier which is not saying a huge amount but Again, tell me if you've heard this before at this class. Instincts and vision, eh. Is he the most physical player? Eh. He, does he miss more tackles than he want? Yeah. But really the range and physicality, or not physicality, sorry, just range, coverage ability, I think is really is one of the better ones of the second tier of linebackers here. And that's something I really want to bet on. I like betting on an upside athlete. I think he really is that. A uh, comp that I saw in the Beast from the Athletic Stain Burglar is Terrell Bernard. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Just third round player, to maybe fourth round, take a year to learn NFL defense, and then really take off as kind of a coverage ace, nickel linebacker. Interesting. Interesting take. Um, now, Curtis Jacob, anybody coming out of Penn State, Mace, is going to test very, very well. They don't win games. Right, they don't. They can't do any, much else out. Like once you get to the playoffs, but God, do they train their players up? Uh, do you have any love for Curtis Jacobs? Um, I think he is an athletic player with an NFL ready frame, and I think you're right that Penn State does do a lot to make sure their players are very prepared for the underwear Olympics and the pro day Olympics. There you go. Um, nah, he's a three year starter, but he wasn't a team captain. Although I guess he's still a positive presence in the locker room, which is more than we could say for. Guys before him, like, I don't know, Michael Parsons, didn't he? Was it Michael Parsons that was having trouble? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good sign. Um, his instincts need work. I think he struggles to release off of blocks that he kind of just, like, veers into himself. And then he stays flat-footed in coverage and waits till someone makes an initial contact with him. That's him having to push off, which is going to be a flag probably a lot of the time in the NFL. So he's got some things he can brush up on. However, 
Um, if you do find him on a good day, he can be a tackling machine and a bowling ball. Yeah. These Penn State guys are so frustrating. We talked about it last week with Chop yep. a couple yep. years ago with Odafe away. Just like so much raw talent. I think the coaching just like doesn't do anything to develop them. It's like, what, does, what are you guys doing here? Real quick. Oh, I like Adisa or is it Adisa Isaac? Yeah. The other yep. edge? I, I like yep. him. I, yeah. Sorry. I know it's the same I like story, him. though. It's the same yeah. story. The, they're sexy, but they don't win games, but they can push them all into the NFL and they all do well. So, yeah, it is always amazing how many Penn State players are in the NFL, considering like they're not Alabama, they're not, you know, Georgia. Yeah. Still impressive. And even offensive side of the ball, Godwin, uh, Dotson, Friermuth. Yep. Kaseki. Like, they put guys in there. They put guys in there. Uh, Mace, before we go to you for your pick number 10. Tell me a little bit about playing the bass. The bass. <laughs> like, how long have you been playing the bass? So, when my son was first born, I guess just four years ago, I got one off of Donner.com for like 89 bucks, and I stared at it for a year. And I, one night, it was like 2 in the morning, I used to have to push my son in a stroller around because he wouldn't sleep. And he would fall asleep to Primus. And crong beans. Was, that's it, dude. It was the weirdest thing because it's all kind of doinks and twangs. And so I was just listening to Les Claypool. And one day I said, you know what, I man? It's two in the morning. Everyone's up anyways. I'm just going to start playing. So I did. And every time the kids get fussy and I get frustrated, I take it out on my base and I just do finger exercises. So it's kind of been therapeutic and it, it helps me. And now my kids like it because I'm good enough that I can use pedals and they'll like try to sing songs and stuff or like try to tell me how to play. So it's kind of like a fun game that we do now. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. I saw you playing the Deftones. You posted that on X oh, yeah. the other day. I was like, <laughs> look at you, Mace. Good for you. Good for you. I'll never forget what one of my um, friends who's in a band said to me. He said, do you know what you do if your bass player is drowning? Throw them their amp. <laughs> and people love that joke. I don't get it, but I guess they don't like bassists. No, nobody likes bases, but Dude, not I even bases like bases. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a joke that'll land for like five people out there, but <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Mace, you're up with number 10. Okay. Um, no one's picked Jalen Ford yet, right? No. no. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with Jalen Ford, uh, six, two, two forty ish. Um, uh, like uh, he just pursues, he's another one of those guys kind of like in the like uh gray second tier range for me. Um, I don't want to say same song and dance because obviously they're different players, but um, I guess this late in the draft, you just got to go for guys who you think that are athletic enough to put themselves in an opportunity to do something. I feel like he could be good on special teams, if anything. And if someone gets hurt, then you kind of get this guy up. Um, his instincts aren't amazing, but uh, whose instincts are amazing, and sometimes he takes himself out of play, but. Aside from that, he's athletic to or athletic enough to recover. And I feel like in the league, if you put him on a tight end, I feel like he's good enough to hold his own. It's funny when you said that about instincts with what Joe said before. My note was instincts. Eh. <laughs> I feel like so many of these guys are so similar. I know yeah, I think I know. Jacobs and Ford, it's like Jacobs, I lean to. I think he's more athletic going backwards, whereas Ford is better forward. <laughs> and like it's but really it's like eh, it's the next guys, I'm sure, are gonna be the same. It's, well, you know, Jameson and I were talking about uh, before you guys jumped on how everybody's the same size. Mm -hmm. They're all six foot to six foot four on the outlier, and they're all 230 pounds. Like, do we think the NFL is is ready to shift this way? And do we think offenses are then going to counter shift? Because if I'm Derrick Henry or the next Derrick Henry, I love seeing 230 pound linebackers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, oh, like, you know, I'm, I'm like Bugs Bunny on the deserted island, just seeing like a turkey leg. I'm like, mm, give me some. Yeah, I mean, that's why we're seeing like the Chiefs, they're switching to more 13 personnel base, 12 personnel. We're seeing the Eagles. That's a huge reason they're so successful is countering that. Yep. Even like a Roquan Smith, who the biggest knock on him was his size. And now he's an average linebacker. But five, five, six years ago, he was like the smallest linebacker in the league. So it's. Definitely shifting that way. Yeah, I think you just want more athleticism in linebackers nowadays yeah. because you get a lot of these guys and you know RPO, outside screens, doing things, recovering. It's it's a much higher tempo game. You have 
mm-hmm. you know, the Kyle Pitts, you know, hopefully he gets a breakout this year, right? But like the athletic guys that are like that, that you're going to have to go out and get, you got players like Isaiah Simmons getting caught in the crossfire. Is he an edge? Is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? Like what's going on? Mm-hmm. So um, even like Marquise Bell, an undrafted guy from two years ago, stepped in, played linebacker slash safety. Loved having him last year and sliding him in on DB. Oh, yeah. But um, just, I don't know, kind of players like that. But yeah, like Joseph was saying, you, you see these Stephon guys. Diablo the same same idea, right? Same yeah. Idea like you just need a guy that can do both. And athleticism beats, I think, everything else. So I was going right. to say, I was going to say just with the amount of zone that all these defenses are playing now too, you can't have the old heavy linebackers that can't cover the middle of the field when you have Patrick Mahomes dinking and dunking and doing all that stuff. It's not like, you know, they're doing the cover two over the top and then everybody just plays the middle. And if you got a good quarterback who can attack the middle of the field, you'd rather have good linebackers who can play in coverage. And that's where the athleticism and all that stuff kind of comes in. It's just, it's changing. And then, you know, you do one chess move and then offense does another and we're just going back and forth right now. At least the smart coaches do, right? The smart coaches right. do. Uh, Jamison, with the number 11 pick, the penultimate pick, where are you going? I'm going to go to Ohio State. Just uh, one of these projects that I think could lean into, you know, hopefully pan out. But I'm going to go with Steel Chambers. Uh, previously a running back who transitioned, played the last three years at linebacker. He's got good, good decisiveness and good reaction. Uh, he can shed blockers. Plays in both man and zone coverage, which I think is, you know, a benefit for him, especially going in these later guys. And then just seems like one of these projects who can actually have an upward trajectory, at least in my eyes. Needs to have better play strength, and he gets caught a lot on counters and misdirection. So going up against, you know, say like Kyle Shanahan probably wouldn't be the most fun for him. But uh, other than that, I do think he's one of these linebackers who can grow and have some potential at the NFL. Well, Steel Chambers easily has like the best name though, right? Like <laughs> yes. that's a great name. It sounds like a WWE <laughs> name. Oh, yeah. Say, yeah. But <laughs> Steel Chambers. Like that's awesome. That's awesome, Mace. Do you have any thoughts on Steel Chambers? I saw him at the Shrine Bowl. Um, I think he performed all right. I think he's just kind of cultivated in a, a mix of guys that have the same kind of skill set as him, and it's gonna take for him to emerge on special teams or something like that. All right. Well, that leaves us, Joe, with you yes. having the final pick. So I'm going to pull the class here. I am between two players. There's one who's kind of more mainstream, or I can go way off the board. Someone I am a fan of, though. They're actually back to back in my rankings. Where do you guys want to see? Off more the wall. Off the wall. Okay, let's do it. We're going to go with Georgia State's John Trey Hunter. This yeah. super off the wall player who I absolutely loved. And then I saw his athletic testing and was floored. Ran a 491 at his <laughs> pro day, I think it was. But I have a note the really the only the main film that's out there is against LSU, where he was kind of beating the crap out of Jaden Daniels and running him down the entire game. Now he was the only, and did I say Georgia State, South Alabama? I'm sorry. But Nah, which school is it? I have both Georgia notes State. down. Georgia State. Okay. You're right, first time. You're right the first time. Oh, I have the South Alabama somewhere else. I was like, wait. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait a second. second. But, yeah, he was – I think he's a really good athlete overall. The testing was really because it was poor across the board. His RAS score was 2.6, which is really shocking. But like, watching him, yeah, he was running down – Jane Daniels ran down Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas a couple times, forced fumbles. He has seven forced fumbles in his career, which is something he has a huge knack for. Uh, short area, lateral quickness is really good. I think he's used to be a safety. That's He came into college as a safety, played nickel for them for a few years, and then transitioned on some weight. He's put on 40 pounds in the last four years, bulked up to be a linebacker. It still looks like he can add another 20 comfortably, but with that speed, maybe not. But he's someone who, yeah, I'm really fascinated by him. Again, the Georgia Georgia State defense has no one, so they got ran over by LSU. But he looked really good. Someone who definitely, if he goes seventh round, I'm still on to take him as a flyer on the waiver wires in my drafts. That's my last pick. Someone stash him for a year. I think he's one of those guys. My comp for him is 
This is a really weird one. Like the upside is not there, but he reminds me a lot of Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, at least stylistically. I think he could be in that role. Now he's three years older than JOK was as a prospect. Clearly the testing isn't there, but I think role wise, it did take JOK a couple years. So it's someone who I think it's interesting. Very interesting player, if nothing else. Now I wonder, you know, PFF just introduced that their gas score game athleticism score um, where they use GPS and they measure like miles per hour and like the top five. Uh, I think you have to be like an NFL team to get that level of yeah. detail, but I would be interested on a player like John Trey Hunter, yeah. right? Who's maybe coming from Georgia state. He doesn't have the uh, funds to pay for like the 40 yard dash coaching right. because 40 yeah. yard dash is all about your start. Right, it's that first ten yards, and that's training. That's you know rep after rep after rep. It's technique, and maybe if you don't have that, you know you don't look as good. I hope. Is that a stretch though, mate? You go to Penn State or no? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. I I completely agree with you because we see these guys, especially in IDP. Um, how many years did it take TJ Edwards to get paid? And that's because why he's undrafted. That's it. The performance is on the field, but there's just still questions just because of that. We see guys like Chase Young, $13 million. He still needs surgery. He's the second overall pick. That's why. Yep. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's it. So, yes, you're right. Like, is it worth it to get these guys in a position for them to make more money? Yes, I think so. All right, gentlemen, let's go over the back half of this draft. We had Tommy Eichenberg uh, going at number seven. We had Maris Liafu uh, going at number eight. Followed by Curtis Jacobs, Jalen Ford, Steel Chambers, and John Trey Hunter. You gotta hold up a title belt when you say Steel Chambers, dude. <laughs> something. Or like drop an elbow. I want to do something there. Um, so four round combined rookie draft in a dynasty league. Okay, so we're talking about a little bit of a deeper league. Are any of these back six going in that draft? There's offense in this one? Offense and defense, yeah. I might Only get, if one of them gets... Go ahead, Mace, sorry. Sorry, I'm my bad. I might get spicy and take one in the fourth just because, like, I am an IDP guy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, just to staple it in there. But it's going to be someone that's... Well, it's going to have to be after the draft. Before the draft, no. After the draft, I know landing spot, probably. Yeah, and what I was going to say is if one of these guys finds their way into the top 100, maybe 125 picks, but it have to be they go, it's like Curtis Jacobs goes to Pittsburgh or something where they don't have a second linebacker, really. Or anybody going to the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> but. Ben Van Summeren. <laughs> Jameson, where are you? Would you take any of these guys, do you think? I don't think so, but I'll be honest, I lean more into offense. So I just think, you know, like I said, after landing spot, if you get a place that, you know, you can just enter a body right in and he plays right away. But other than that, a lot of these guys are projects. Um, like I know Mace took Eichenberg. I'm much lower on Eichenberg than uh, he is. So it just, I mean, it really ends up being landing spot. But I, I wouldn't think so, but that's just my mentality there too. Yeah, and also I'm going to take a shot on a Bub Means from Pittsburgh wide receiver over Jalen Ford or someone. Like, really, what's the difference between Jalen Ford and the fourth name, next name? Like, right. I'd rather take a pick, spend a pick on an upside shot somewhere else. The secret of IDP, you can find a lot on the waiver wire. <laughs> yep. You can find a lot on the waiver wire. Yeah, you do. Easiest, easiest way to get an edge, right, is playing IDP and knowing your stuff, man. So yeah. easy to get so a jump easy. on dynasty leagues. But gentlemen, as a dynasty diehard, I want to know the next crew. I love these secret little gems. So I want to know who is the best of the rest. Give me one, two, if you're feeling frisky, four players who you think we should keep an eye on. Mace, you're up first. Okay. So um Aaron Casey out of is it oh, In, no. Indiana. Indiana. Indiana? Indiana. Indiana, thank you. Yes. Uh saw him at the Shrine Bowl. Uh he didn't like blow my socks off, but I really was attracted to the way that he was playing. Very good player, I think. Um, he was a super senior though, red shirt plus five for year with the COVID thing. But uh he played Mike in a four two five scheme, only six foot two thirty, like everyone else. 
Um, not particularly strong in his own coverage, but he is a big striker. Um, I really like him, but he's more like a seventh round guy. Hopefully he can get in somewhere. Um, another guy who I have that might be undrafted free agent, but I'm really rooting for also the shrine ball. Uh, probably going to butcher his name. Um, May Mayma Najong Mehta from Wisconsin. He lost his starting role this past year, regained it, had an amazing 2022 season with Wisconsin. He is slightly undersized, 5'11", 230 ish. But if you look at him on tape, he looks like an old school 70s or 80s linebacker. And he plays that way, dude. He plays so violent. And I just, I love those box safety guys or those linebackers that just bring the pain. And he's one of those guys. Um, not amazing though in coverage. I think he had the worst running combine of any linebacker there. So um, that kind of sucks, but I am definitely still rooting for him to make a roster spot. It's going to be hard because I don't know how efficient he would be on special teams. Um, one more guy whose name I am also probably going to butcher, but um, Edufon Ua Fochio from Washington, 24 years old, Mike linebacker in the uh, 4 2 5 scheme, six foot 230. He was a six-year player with two injury seasons. Um, in 2021, he had a bicep, which held about six games, 2022 ACL for eight games. And he came back and knocked the Sox off the 2023 season. Um, obviously, their team went pretty far throughout the uh, college experience for them. Um, he overcame injuries and missed minimal tackles. He is actually super athletic. He ran a 4 5 6 40. And uh, his last name means not afraid of war. So I'm about this guy. Oh, there we go. That's a little <laughs> badass over there. Fire me up, right? You, you had me at not afraid. You had me at not afraid. Yeah. So, Jameson, who do you have? I got two. I was going to add Aaron Casey to it just because I'm an Indiana native, but I'm going to go Tyron Hopper from Missouri. He's a guy with great length, speed, and agility. It's very physical, but a uh, problem with him, he gets lost in coverage. And he's got kind of lacks some instincts. And then uh, going to UTEP, Tyrese Knight. Uh, plenty of college production. He's a tackling machine, uh, but he does a lot of freestyling, and I think that's what's going to hurt him at the NFL level. Tyrese Knight and Tyron Hopper. Joseph? A couple names. Uh, first, in the mold of your Tommy Eichenberg, Jeremiah Trotter, have another leader, time player, just your Mike linebacker, J.D. Bertrand and Nathaniel Watson of Notre Dame and – Mississippi State, respectively, uh, both good leaders. I think they were the, at the Senior Bowl. They won like the linebacker of the weeks for their respective teams. Um, they both end up calling plays and helping out plays at the Senior Bowl on a short week. Good players, jack of all trades. They're guys who the NFL is going to like a lot. And the Ivan Pace mold where it's like, oh, you're not big or athletic, but you're good at football and a leader. Let's give you some reps. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, have to give a shout out to my fellow alum of the University of Wyoming and Easton Gibbs, who has hell of a mustache and mullet. But a uh, good coverage guy, not a great, not the greatest athlete, good tackler. He's not a Chad Muma or a Logan Wilson, but I think he could stick on a roster. And then Darius, uh, Darius Masao out of UCLA has some hype around. I wasn't huge on him. I honestly haven't seen much of him. But and then the last name, Jordan McGee out of Temple, someone who I actually just saw for the first time today, not going to lie, but really interesting player. I think he's another one of those guys who could be an edge rusher, just really good athlete. So, yeah. Well, That'll that's a bunch of the best of the rest. That was almost uh, 10 players, 10 Ooh. bonus players, which is fantastic. Uh, all I heard about J.D. Bertrand coming out of the Senior Bowl is how vocal he was. Just like a very good leader. So I'm interested to uh, see what he does. I know uh, Maris Liafu, right, out of Notre Dame, was also a very, very good leader. Anybody have anything to add on any of those players, Mace? Can I just have one more player? Oh, Not yeah. Because of his ability, but He's because of where he played. Okay, so I think if Harbaugh isn't able to get Colson in the second round, I think in like yeah. the fifth, sixth or seventh, he's going to take Michael Barrett. Um, so not, not spectacular at anything, but he's in the, kind of the same mold, six foot, 230, 240, kind of falling with these guys. You might see him go play special teams and earn a special roster spot because I think outside of like Hanley, they don't have any linebackers at the moment that they really have invested in. Kenneth Murray just left too. So Perryman, yeah. 
Yeah, well, so, I expect him to be around like eight games. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. So yeah, if you're talking about dart throws, I mean, don't draft him, but definitely watch him on the wire for sure. Anybody else? Anyone we want to throw in? All right. Well, we're not just pretty faces here at IDP Plus, as you might have noticed. Uh, we have an entire suite of tools. I just love that phrase. Suite of tools and rankings for both offense and defense, plus rookie rankings, injury trackers, snap tools, premium articles, and more. Right now, get your first month for just $1 with the promo code MOCK. Draft. Head over to idpguys.org after the show to get ahead of your lazy league mates and start your march towards fantasy football greatness today with the promo code mock draft. The link and the details are in the show description. Gentlemen, it is time for tags where we let them know where they can find us and share any final thoughts that we have. Mace, you may go first. Yeah, um, I'm on Twitter or X, if that's what you want to call it, at Cali King4917. I'm a content creator and ranker at RPO Football and Fantasy Pros. So if you go to RPO Football, uh, you can get my rookie rankings, um, updating them pretty much every day. So, um, yeah, and Dynasty rankings as well. Awesome. Jameson. I'm over on the Twitter machine at Jameson Rules, uh, obviously doing the podcast here, uh, sweating NFL draft bets for the next two weeks as I've been grinding that for the last two months. But other than that, uh, just find me on Twitter. I'm usually bitching about wrestling. And other than that, that's about it. Thoughts about uh, WrestleMania? Epic. It's awesome. It was uh, good. it was it was a hell of a time. If you are a wrestling fan and uh, want to relive some of the glory days, the last like 25 minutes of WrestleMania was awesome, and uh, we'll hit you right in the fields. But it was a uh, it was a great time. Well, you want to be get be careful getting hit in the fields, especially Sans Jockstrap. Uh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, any final thoughts? Um, you can find me on X Twitter at Jolo63. I write for IDP guys and do IDP Plus now. And also I'm on the mailbag show with my guy Justin Fry, who's at JFryDP. And yeah, Tuesdays at two o'clock. You can email us, shoot us a DM. Um, I also have a couple articles that have come out in the past weeks with some rookie rankings couple previews top few players at linebacker edge quarterback and wide receiver i did i believe and yeah that's about it jj thank you for hosting as always it is always my pleasure i'm at jj wenner on twitter pretty simple thank you to mace for taking time to chat with us tonight make sure you check him out over at rpo uh, i was lucky enough to win a subscription to rpo last year Great content over there. They're doing really good work. Uh, thank you to Joe and Jameson, as always, for helping out. Special thank you always goes out to Gary and Foxworth for helping us produce the pod and doing all the stuff behind the scenes. Uh, and from all of us to all of you, be safe, be well, and as always, boat drinks, my friends. Boat drinks. <laughs> <laughs>